it is my extreme honor uh, to be just saying a few words tonight as Peter gets a most well-deserved award, the Spirit of L'Arche Award this year. Um, thank you very much, Allie, for putting this together via Zoom because as everybody knows, we should be doing this in person, but that's not gonna be possible this year. But I was lucky enough to see Peter <sighs> say hello. Hey, Joni. Um, as most people associated with large Portland now, Peter was there right from the beginning. And um, aside from his professional work, working dentistry for disabled folks, for a lot of it, um, right there at the founding of large Portland 30 plus years ago, I've known him, what Peter, it must be 12 or 14-ish years at this point. Peter, Peter and Jerry Dees were the first uh, board members to interview me before they made the mistake to put me on the board. <laughs> it's, no, no, no. So it's, it's been a while. Um, and since he fully retired from dentistry, he's been my number one fishing person for a while now. You know, one thing about Peter's work in dentistry, uh, you, you mentioned Paul Lipscomb talking about his daughter, Catherine, and, and I, it struck me, it says, and within five minutes, her dental visit was over. And um, Peter and I have a mutual friend. He's one of my best friends named Matt, who has a child with very severe uh, cerebral palsy who needed to have a tooth removed a few years ago. And he said, God, you know, you think Peter could see him? And Peter, of course, did it. And my friend Matt was just amazed. He said, he, Peter walked over and just kind of started talking to Ron. And, he sort of brushed the side of his face for a second to distract him, and, and the tooth was out. It's like a miracle. But when I read Paul's description of um, how, how quickly you, you dealt with those situations, I was like, that must have been a real boon to uh, the population that you were serving. But when I, when I think about Peter, I think uh, one of the most thoughtful, kindest, uh, and gentle people I've ever known. He is an exceptionally good friend to me and has been an unbelievable cornerstone on the building of large Portland. And um, so with that, through the magic of Zoom, um, I would like to present Peter with the Spirit of Large Award, which I'm going to pass into the ether, we think is going to magically appear on his end. Wow. Oh, I think I'm on Space Mountain. <laughs> Whoa, it arrived. Hey, congratulations. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> I mean, that was sort of my my memories of, of Lars, basically, is the one word I could think of was family. Families, um, you know, starting off basically naive with parents would bring their children into me. And at that time we let parents stay in and they would talk about their children, be it with you know, cerebral palsy or special needs. And for 42 minutes, they would talk. And I became acquainted with what? The reality of uh, living, at, living at home or in foster care or whatever with folks. And that sort of was my touchstone of um, being connected with with foster families and parents and special needs, mostly children and young adults. However, I did see Joni at the dental clinic <gasps> the, back 30 years ago. I I oh my remember, gosh. I still remember the tooth. <laughs> okay, and I said, no, no, don't take out that tooth. It's a good tooth. Let me see your teeth. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And actually, she was a pretty good patient. <laughs> um, because of my, what, I suppose, desire or whatever to, to give a pitch into families, I hooked up with Joyce Coglin, and we, we actually ran a weekend for spirituality and support for foster families and parents. And that was another big step because it was a dirt when Dorothy takes hold, I she did a great weekend for these parents. And that was sort of my, okay, there are people out there that are really, really invested in um, 
taking care of families, parents, and folks with special needs. And you, you start with sort of a, a small nuclear family. And, but for me, the, the families, be it teachers at school or doctors, nurses, um, and I think of, of Larsh as a family, families. They are peripheral families that have provided support as well. And that's sort of a big family, bigger family. So I, I kind of watched this a lot from the periphery, but wow, I was just amazed at the people and families that over the 30 plus years have been involved with. Um, it, it's been a real blessing for me and my family to be associated with Larsh and the greater family of Larsh. Could you um, can you name some ways that your spirituality kind of informs your your work and your involvement with Larsh? I mentioned that when I started working at the university and meeting so many families, and that it became that I was what absorbing or learning from parents, families, and in their own way, how children and young people with special, special needs convey their needs and wants and happiness and sadness. And it, that sort of washed over me and I just grew with that. And, then, uh, and I think through large meeting people with various stories and background also helped me to see just how vivid and important people's journeys are. You know, the, the assistants can be here for two years and then, I mean, they're off. I mean, they've, they've been imprinted with Larsh and they're gonna never forget that experience um, looking back. I mean, I mean, you just kind of never escape that aura. And I think for me, probably, a little bit of that aura exists too, um, as far as embracing the the tenets and spirituality of Larsh. Um, since since you're winning the the Spirit of Larsh Award this year, um, I'm curious what the Spirit of Larsh means to you. Well, um, the first impact when when I was told about it was the humility. Um, as in a sense that my first reaction was that, my gosh, uh, Diane Frank, Dorothy, the Wisenseys, you know, the assistants, the, the board members. Um, I mean, it, anyways, it was sort of like, it was hard to accept the gift, I guess, initially. And, um, and I think over the, over the, the last week or two since I've, have been able to absorb it is that okay yeah is that this has been a real impact in my life and in my family's life and i think treasure it as such as um something for the journey but continuous continuing the journey as well so thank you <laughs> i'm very privileged or as I said, humbled and honored. I could use a few more adverbs, I guess, but I really hope and pray that both the homes or all the homes just keep keep their spirits up with all this uh, going on. And um, it's you know, you folks are dealing obviously with people with you know medical conditions and things like, and that's sort of like that you stay safe and blessed and protected, I guess, um, during this time, um, all of us, but more so with the, those folks doing the, the cooking, the cleaning, the, all the stuff, the showering and stuff that's so vital for everyday life. So. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, for, thank you for setting this up now, gosh. Of course. Yeah, thanks, Allie. Connected here, wow. Yeah, great to see you all.